March 21st, 2020, and I have nine friends online. I wonder what they're playing. Oh, yeah, right. We join Nook, and you can tell he has cash to spare because he's talking into a microphone outside in the rain. He tells us he's going to start doing island-wide broadcast starting immediately, and tells us that the CDC strongly recommends staying inside- Oh, wait, no, actually the opposite. He's telling us to hop on planes and go to other islands. How fun. He lets everyone know we can also send mail from the airport and officially announces that Blythers is in town. I step outside of my newly renovated home and immediately take out my cell phone in the rain. I moved to this island without any bells, you think I care about money? I claim some nook miles for having a house and open my mailbox to see that my mom and the Happy Home Academy have sent me gifts. But most importantly, my copy of KK Cruising has arrived, heck yeah. I notice my penguin pattern is obscured by my new stairs, so I destroy it without thinking twice and go inside to check out my new digs. I love it. But I have a radio that plays random music and not a stereo that I can put my KK Cruising copy into, so I figure I should fix that as soon as I can. Before that though, let's do some rearranging. Ah, so much more beautiful and homey. I learned how to make a wooden end table, put on my new shirt and bandana, install my sink and wash my hands, then head out into the rainy day. I check in with Muffy and find a glowing spot in the ground. Figuring it's probably nothing, I decide to go see how the Knicks are doing. I come in to hear Tom telling Timmy that he and Tommy need to stop freeloading around and get their own business started. Nook gasses up how great the house he built for me is before getting to the part that really brings his capitalist heart joy. How much the renovation is gonna cost me. I ask if I can pay him miles and he spits in my face and calls me scum. Then he gives me a free Nook Miles ticket, aka that thing I was debating buying yesterday with my own hard-earned miles. Thank goodness I fought against my impulses for once in my life. I check the recycle box to see if there's any free stuff. There's not. Then I talk to Timmy and he asks me to collaborate with him to build a shop. I agree to help a bro out. I mean, all I need to do is get 30 hardwood, 30 softwood, 30 regular wood, 30 iron nuggets, 30 eggs, 30 gallons of water, 30 days of my life back. Oh wait, this is my quarantine list. I buy a slingshot because I'm sure that'll help, use up some of the wood I should be saving to make a wooden end table, and then a new flimsy axe so I can go bully some trees. I step outside specifically to check my phone in the rain, then realize I have enough miles to snag those recipes I looked at yesterday. With this newfound knowledge, I create an even better tree battering tool and set back out. I decide that rock shouldn't get away scot-free and I try my axe on one. And not only am I surprised that it actually hits, but it also spits out bells. Who knew it would be so beneficial to be mean to nature? I come across Tank and he's heard that I'm gathering materials to help build a shop. To help out, he hands me some iron nuggets. What a friend. While gathering, I spot a present floating by on a balloon and shoot it down with my slingshot and inside was 5,000 bells. This slingshot is already the best investment I've ever made. I take a break from gathering to freshen up my living spaces a bit. Then when it's back to hitting trees, I accidentally knock down a wasp nest. In a panic, I run to resident services and try to chop the tent down, but no luck and I get all stung up. Since I'm here, I go inside and drop off 30 hardwood and 30 regular wood. And Timmy gives me some book stands and a stove top espresso maker in return. Reading at the speed of sound will help me as I recover from being mauled. Before I leave, I make a regular watering can, a decent bug net, and a passable fishing rod. At the beach, I find Gulliver washed up on shore. Thinking my face in his current state would be the most welcoming thing for him to see after waking up, I poke at him until he starts moving. Falling off ships seems to be his primary talent, so I assume he doesn't do well in very many fandoms. His cell phone is the only way he can contact his crew and it's broken, so it's up to me to find the missing pieces that fell off before he runs out of nautical puns. They're buried in the sand though, so I might want to figure out how to make a shovel at some point in my life. Nearby, I find a real nice message in a bottle that tells me to love me the way that I am. Thank you, bottle message. I am beautiful. Then I talk to Muffy, who's stunned by my hideous face. She gives me the recipe for making medicine. In a cruel twist of fate, it requires a wasp's nest. Whoever came up with this probably used magnifying glasses to fry ants as a kid. I finally take the time to go say hi to Blathers, and he explains that he's gonna need more than just fish and insects to open up a museum around these parts. He theorizes that a bunch of fossils are on the other side of the river, and sends me the recipe for making a vaulting pole. He also sends me the recipe for shovel making. Ah, oh, thank goodness. I can finally live my dream of putting holes in the ground. I give him the fish that probably aren't doing too well living in my pockets, and he tells me some trivia about each of them. Afterwards, I take my newfound DIY knowledge over to the workbench and make a vaulting pole, a wooden full-length mirror, a wooden block toy, an old-fashioned wash tub, a stone stool, and a frying pan. My house is really starting to come together. I go and buy the tool ring because I've heard it's essential. Gotta say, it is fun to just go around in a circle like this. I get over my fears embedded in me from high school track and field and pull out over the river to access more weeds and trees for crafting. And then my axe breaks. I go back to resident services and finally make a shovel, as well as some much needed medicine and an even more vital hay bed. Now this is living in paradise. I take my shovel and dig up 1,000 bells from the gates of Olympus and plant one of the apples my mom sent me in his place. I take a picture for posterity and then head back across the river with a new flimsy axe where I find my first fossil. Then another floating present comes along containing a fairy tale hood. This was made for me. I also found one of the communicator parts. Just four more to go. Man, I just realized how big my list of to-do items is all of a sudden. It's mildly stressful. I thought this island getaway was supposed to be relaxing. I give the fossil to Blathers and it turns out to be a T-Rex torso. 
I'm totally ready for this island to become Jurassic Park. Deciding I should focus on one task at a time to avoid confusing myself over where, what, and who I am, I gather the rest of Gulliver's communicator parts and hand them back to him. As thanks, he promises to send me something in the mail that I should check for in a few days. Next on the list is to get Timmy the rest of the materials he needs. I vault across the river and get to work whacking trees and, uh, oops, uh-oh, this axe is actually sharp. Well, shoot, I actually feel kind of bad about that. I go around shaking trees to break loose some branches and make a blunt axe, then I get right back to it. And wouldn't you know it, yet another floating present is just overhead, and this time it has five iron ores inside. Thanks for watching over me, Tortimer. I get attacked by wasps yet again and try to escape, but you know what, I'm still at least a six like this, so I'll just let it go. Quite a while later, I gather 30 pieces of softwood. Now all that's left is the iron and then I can be done. I think that was the only rock I have in it yet, and I'm only at 13 iron ores. Well, so much for that. I give Timmy the 30 pieces of softwood and he gives me some concrete flooring. I use Tom's workbench to craft my own portable workbench and an ocarina. It doesn't make me teleport through time, trust me, I tried. I visit Nookstop to drop 5,000 miles on this pocket organization guide and see what that's all about. Ah, oh, it lets me carry more things, thank goodness, my pack mule potential is being realized. After I catch a few more critters for blathers, Muffy runs up to me excitedly and gives me a spare stone axe to help me gather things for the shop. Really appreciate it, considering my other axe will probably break next time a butterfly flaps its wings too hard. I take my new donations to blathers and only need one more to go. So I grab my fishing rod and go catch a stone. Then I catch a red snapper and give it to Blathers. Now the museum will be built soon, yay. Realizing I haven't checked the Nook shopping part of the Nook stop yet, I peruse it and wow, they're really doing this to me, huh? I step outside to give my portable crafting table a whirl and sell the results to Timmy, but it's still not enough. So I liberate some fish from their homes and now my second switch will arrive in the mail tomorrow. Feeling a bit bummed about running out of rocks to hit for ore, I ask a friend if I can visit her island and she agrees. So I gather up some gift peaches and hop aboard the next flight to Fluffton. I quickly use some medicine to look my best, then my friend and I stare at our phones near each other for a very long time. Typical. We exchange unique fruits, I grab some apples, and I go meet her local island neighbors Tammy and Billy. Then it's rock hitting time. Except she already broke all of her rocks today. Having not previously known that that was possible, I learned that all I have to do is eat some fruit, and then I can unleash all kinds of fury on nature. But first, Bits gives me some iron ore that she had lying around, and we take a picture at the airport. Back at home, I take a bite of Mike's secret stuff, and sure enough, I completely obliterate the first rock that looks at me funny. I go and give a couple other rocks the same treatment to satisfy my hunger for power. My warpath leads me towards chopping down trees to replace them with foreign fruits, and for the third time today, I get hassled by wasps. I realize I could try to catch them with my bug net, but instead I decide to do a cartoon skid to a stop and let them have at my face. You know, it's been a long day. I'm gonna sit next to Tank and just... Relax for a minute. Wait, when did I get on this plane? I don't have an umbrella in the rain, so this is the perfect time to take out my phone as my friend stares at me. Here, I meet Fuchsia and... Tank? I... What? I step out of the twilight zone and goof around on the island for a while before snapping another quick photo and heading back home once more. Having spent nearly enough money to pay off my house loan and putting none of it towards my actual house, I decide that this has been more than enough adventuring for one day and head home to turn in for the night. Before I do though, I see I have mail from Bits. Since I forgot to use medicine before I landed, she saw me pre-operation and sent me over some more medicine to help. I write her back and include a wooden end table as thanks. With that done, I'm finally ready to wrap things up for now and take a nice relaxing evening for myself.